Uh, Kenwood TS870 um, seems to have a fault on antenna 2 now it's nothing to do with uh, the receive circuit it's to do with the relay that switches to antenna 2 so currently I've just got it set to antenna 1 which you can be seeing there and and I've set both the receives to the same frequency um, now on the back of the unit here I've got an antenna switch and currently I'm going into antenna 1 now if I switch that now to antenna 2 and now switch this to antenna 2 nothing there is a doubt there. so it would seem that the actual there's a relay that's not been switched to switch in either of the antenna, well, the antenna two. Um, the default position is for antenna one. So what we're gonna have to do is have a look at why that relay isn't switching. Uh, to gain access to the relay, we're gonna have to remove the lid and in the uh, best blue Peter tradition, uh, here's what I prepared earlier. Remove the lid. And part we're interested in, let's just parry him off a minute, uh, is underneath this plate. So there's about six, seven screws around there, just remove those and I'll gently lift away this plate. Okay, the part of the board we're interested in is just here. Okay, this is the ATU and there is a control chip underneath. Uh, so we're going to have to lift this out at some point, which just means removing some of these cables. But this is the relay we're interested in. This switches between the antenna 1 and antenna 2. And it's done via a control signal from these cables here. Now, when I opened this up, there was actually a bodge on there where somebody had shorted out the two antenna cable uh, switching circuits. With, but you're supposed to use a diode to do it, I believe, from what I've read. But they just shorted it out. So I think that's created uh, some of the problems. Um, but what I'm going to do first, I'm going to obviously test that the relay is working and see if we can get a um, continuity signal uh, from A, from the input there, and then switch the relay on, uh, continuity to there, obviously taking the radio circuit out, out, out of play sort of thing. So we'll do that first, we'll test the relay to make sure it's working okay. Um, but then other than that, we then must go down to the circuit diagram. Uh, for those of you who are interested, this is the circuit diagram uh, showing antenna 2, antenna 1, the switching relay between the two antennas. This is the control lines for it. Um, this is where somebody had done a budge and just joined a, a piece of wire across there, uh, which hasn't obviously done anything a lot of good. Uh, if we trace it back through the connection onto the other board, the ATU board, uh, we come down to this component here, which I believe is uh, Q4. Um, that could be faulty. Um, or then we can trace it back to the control chip, which is obviously one. Uh, we can just measure some of the voltage. There's a, a pin to it says ants on it. Um, and that comes down to this actual transistor. Um, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll first of all have a look at whether the relay is working fine. Uh, disconnect this part and just power it up and click it across and test, test it for continuity. Um, and then we'll move further back and we'll test this transistor and, and check the uh, what's stated on here as the supply voltage rails. Right, we're testing continuity between the input on the relay, which is W303. Um, and obviously the antenna one and the two outputs and then I'm just going to put a 12 volt pulse actually onto the uh, the relay contact um, which should energize it so if we check antenna one it should um, be, have continuity and now if we energize the relay it should turn off it has. and if we put it into antenna two there should be nothing. Now if we energise the relay, we should have continuity, which we have. Okay, so that's proving really that the relay is working. Um, the observant might notice that this lightning protector looks a bit charred, but I have tested it, it looks okay, and tests okay, so 
I'm just going to leave those for now. Um, the next thing to do is lift this board out and then we'll have, a, we'll have a look at the control lines coming down and see when we're actually getting the 12 volt pulse to actually switch to antenna 2. Uh, we now need to test this antenna board but unfortunately all the components are on the bottom side of it and I have found in the past that you, if you remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws, disconnect this lead. Um, you can, you, you don't need to take these off then and we can test it in situ. We can just slightly lean the board forward and it should be just enough to gain access to the components that we need which are down here. Now there are some test points on here but we really do need to get down and have a look at the actual components and do a visual inspection of them. Okay this is the underside of the board, um, we've flipped them over. And the components of interest to us at the moment are the uh, band decoder chip, uh, which is a TC1974F, which I believe is an obsolete part, and Q4, um, which is an FMA7, um, which is actually located just there. So what we need to do is look at the control voltages coming off this chip um, and see if they're actually driving this. We, on pin 2 we're looking for a high really to turn this transistor on which should then turn on uh, the relay to uh, engage uh, uh, antenna 2. So we're going to just test some voltages around here. So I'll just do that. Okay I've tested the output of um, IC1 on pin 2 which should turn on this transistor to turn it on and I'm just getting basically zero uh, whichever very slight rise let's just find the switch again yep so we're getting about 2 millivolts so it's either somebody's pulling that pin down so it could be a faulty uh, transistor here so what I'm going to do, I'm going to whip that off um, and then do another test. I've now changed uh, Q4 and checked the voltages and it seems to be working now, it seems to be switching. So it would seem that Q4 was the issue. Um, I'll just show you that on, on the screen there. Now there's Q4 there um, as a pad that runs back to pin 2 of that chip. Um, that wasn't switching at all um, but I think there was a fault in Q4 because effectively they'd shorted out the two contacts here between RL and ANTS which this is directly fed from so I think it damaged this component so I've changed that and now when I uh, switch the antenna switch on the front of the radio um, it jumps up to 12 volts there uh, for uh, antenna 2 and if I switch it back to antenna 1 it drops to 0 effectively clicking the relay in and out so we'll just do a quick test um, but it just seemed to be down to Q4 right another quick test again continuity test I've disconnected the input wire which would have gone to the antennas um, I'm going to do a continuity test between that lead and the output which is switched across the relay so if I put it into antenna 1 and the front is switched to antenna 1 which it should be we should have continuity which we have and we should have nothing on antenna 2 now if we switch to antenna 2 we now have continuity on antenna 2 so the relay is working now and we'll put it back in antenna 1 nothing a uh, quick RF test uh, we we'll switch to antenna 1 on the uh, radio and the, the rear switch I've only got one antenna so is into switcher block uh, he switched also to antenna 1. So now if I switch the rear, well if I switch to antenna 2, nice and quiet now, back to antenna 1. I now switch to antenna 2, or B, on the uh, rotary switch at the back. And now switch this to antenna 2. There we go, it's working lovely. 
So that seems to have cured the problem. It wasn't a receive problem, it was the relay that switches between antenna 1 and antenna 2 at issue. If you do have a receive problem on antenna 2 and all this is working, on the IF board at the bottom, at the very back of the board, there's two little bulbs which are there for protection. You'll more than likely find that uh, one of those bulbs have gone, but I'm just putting it back to standard. Hope that helps anyway.